Hey there crafty friends, my name is Misty. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Gleesman Designs. In today's video, we are doing some gorgeous, budget-friendly spring decor, so let's get crafting. For this DIY, I'm going to be using one of these newer framed signs from Dollar Tree. I love that they're plain, you can do so many different things, and you do not have to remove the hanger if you do not want to. You could make this a hanging piece. However, I just wanted to prop mine up, so I removed the jute twine hanger and then filled in the holes with some Dollar Tree spackling. Once I had the holes completely filled in, I used my zip sander just to sand it down so that it was completely smooth. I want to be able to paint the frame to this sign without having to worry if I get any paint on the backing, so I'm going to use some painter's tape and go along the inside edge and place tape on each side so that I can paint the frame and not get any paint on the inside part where we will be putting our decor piece. Then I go in with the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint in the color Linen White and I paint the entire frame and you want to make sure that you get those inside edges of the frame so that it looks nice and finished. After I have the frame painted, I can go back in and remove the painter's tape and look how perfect that comes out. Just that frame is painted. Now our frame is done and we can move on to the next step and listen, I was so excited when I found this at Dollar Tree. It says hanging holder. However, I do believe they are called wall pockets, but don't quote me on it. I am not 100%. However, I am so excited to DIY with it. Another thing I was super excited to find was this Bloom From Within sticker. These flowers over here are so gorgeous. You could also do a decoupage on top of this metal piece. It would be so pretty as well. However, I'm not the best with decoupage. You'd have to check out my girl Brandy at the DIY Struggle. She is great at decoupage and can teach you so many different things. But this is just a wall decal and I cut the flowers off and stuck them down onto the metal hanging wall hanger, wall pocket, whatever you would like to call it. If you would like to put Mod Podge over top of the sticker, you are more than welcome. However, I did not find it necessary because the wall sticker is very sticky. I want to be able to hang the wall pocket from the backing that we just painted the frame of. So I'm using one of the eye hooks. Yes, you guys, I remembered what they're called this time. I'm always forgetting what those dang things are called. I use an eye hook from one of the picture hanging kits from Dollar Tree. I do take my scissors and just push them up inside and twist so that I can get it to open up a little bit more so that I can take the handle to the wall pocket and hang it onto the backing. Then all you have to do is twist it in and that frame is very, very soft. So it is really easy to twist it into place. And because the eye hook was gold, I also painted it white with the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint. Then you can just take the handle to the metal hanger and hook it right onto the eye hook and you can start adding any florals or greenery that you would like. I decided to go with this Dollar Tree Lavender. I do believe it's their lavender. I know that it looks really realistic and I just like the look of it. And I cut it down using these garden shears from Dollar Tree so that I can make it into a little bundle that I'm going to be putting down inside of my metal hanger. To put it into a little bundle, I just used some Dollar Tree jute twine, wrap it around the Dollar Tree pick that I had cut apart. I put those little pieces into a little bundle and just wrap the jute twine around a few times and tie it into place. Once I had the bundle tied, I cut off the excess and I do add a jute twine hanger onto the back of it just in case I were to want to hang it in the future. But again, for now, I just want to be able to lean it up against other decor so that it could be more of a shelf sitter. But I did want you guys to see that you could add a twine hanger onto the other side and use it to hang up as well. Okay, now if you're one of my peeps that have been around for some time, then you probably know whenever I'm done or think I'm done with a DIY, I always have to go one step further and add something else to it. So after I thought I was done, I decided I wanted to add some of this Dollar Tree lace down here at the bottom of this metal hanger. And all I did was wrap it around, glue it onto the back, and then wrap it to the other side, glue it down on the back, and cut off the excess. 
And of course, once I had that glued down, then the top looked a little too plain for me. So I take some Dollar Tree Jew Twine, I hot glue it down to the back of the metal hanger, and then I wrap it around a few times and glue it back down onto the back and cutting off the excess. And guess what you guys, we are just going to keep going here because once I had the twine on, then I felt like it needed a twine bow as well as I wanted to contribute some of the lace into the bow. So I take the twine, make a loop, give it some space, make another loop, and then you're going to just tie them like you would your shoestring. Now to start pulling on the loops and the tails until you have the size of the bow that you would like. I want to kind of do like a double bow here. So I want to have a lace bow back behind the Jew twine bow. So I make another bow just like I did with the twine bow. I make a loop, give it some space, make another loop and tie them together. Then you can just pull on the loops and the tails until you get the size of the bow that you would like. Now I can take the Jew twine bow and place it on top of the lace bow, pulling the tails down so that they are where I would like them and to make sure that the bow is how I would like it to look. And then I just take some of my hot glue and glue the two bows together. Now I just add a little bit of hot glue on the back of the lace bow and glue the bow right to the metal hanger where I would like the bow to be. I do also decide to go in and use my scissors to cut the lace tails to a dovetail look and that is just by simply folding them in half and cutting them at an inward diagonal angle. Now all I have left to do is hang the metal piece back on the eye hook that is on the backing and I do end up cutting the tails to the jute twine bow down a little bit more and all you have to do is add the florals and this DIY is done. For this DIY, I'll be using one of these new spring picket fence signs from Dollar Tree. Now, they do also have one in the flower pot design with the galvanized metal. I posted that in a YouTube short haul if you guys would like to check that out. But all I did was take my Cricut spatula and I'm going to remove the three-dimensional flowers as well as the metal piece on the sign. And just being honest, they weren't glued on very well, so they were quite easy to pop off. Once you have the watering can removed, if there's any hot glue left over on the sign, pull it off, but do it carefully so you do not rip the paper. Next, I grabbed some of these little white beads from a pack of beads from Dollar Tree. You can use Jenga blocks, the little wood cubes, lots of different items that you could use to make this stand out. All I did was take those wood beads and I just simply hot glued them pretty much on each corner that I could on the galvanized metal piece so that I can add some hot glue onto the top of the beads once they are glued on and then glue the galvanized metal piece back to the sign where it originally was and now it is three dimensional. Now of course you can use whatever florals or greeneries that you would like. I use these dahlias I believe they're called as well as these Dollar Tree greenery. It just says greenery. I absolutely love both of these together especially. I think they look really gorgeous. So I started off by cutting some of them apart completely down so that I had a little bit more control on where I could put them. And then I also took a full pick and just cut a little bit of the bottom off so that I had an entire pick to kind of start and work with, but it won't poke out the bottom of the galvanized metal piece. To start adding my florals, I started with the pick that I just cut the bottom part of the stem off and then I spread it apart, place it down inside the watering can and then once I have that inside, I grab all the picks that I cut individually and place those in where I would like them. Look at how neat and how absolutely gorgeous that is already. 
Now, of course, once I had the watering can already glued down and the flowers inside, I decided it was just a little bit too plain for me and needed a little bit something extra. Now, if you were smart, unlike myself when doing this, you would just before gluing the beads on and then gluing the metal piece back to the sign, take some jute twine and wrap it around the metal piece a few times and then there you go. You can add your beads and then glue it to the sign and you don't have to do it really awkwardly like I did. As you can see, I added the hot glue to the end of the jute twine, glued it up underneath the back of the metal piece and then wrapped it around to the other side and glued it underneath the metal piece on the other side. And I did that two times so that it looked like the jute twine was wrapped around the watering can twice. I also decided to add a little jute twine bow and it is super simple. You make a little loop, give it some space, make another loop, and then wrap those in and tie them together just like you would a normal shoestring. Then you're able to pull on the loops as well as the tails until you get the size of the bow that you would like. And once my bow was how I liked it, I just used my hot glue gun to glue the bow right by the other twine on the watering can and this DIY was done. For this DIY, we are going to be using another one of these framed signs from Dollar Tree. We're going to go th through these first few steps super fast because they are pretty much the same steps that we did for the previous one that we just used. So all I did was add some painter's tape to protect that backing and I paint the frame white. However, this one I do not do a complete coverage. I do have a little bit more of a heavy dry brush technique and then I do remove the painter's tape once I'm done. And once again, that frame is perfect. Gosh, I love that painter's tape technique. So have you guys seen these adorable little metal, not metal, what in the world, Misty? Little wood pots. Oh my goodness, how cute are these? Like, actually, I should say how stinking cute are these, okay? So I want to use enough to spell out the word welcome. And in these packs, you get three in a pack and they are two different sizes. You get one large and two small. So I just put them in a order where large, small, large, small, and I used enough to spell out the word welcome. Then I use the white Rust-Oleum chalk paint again, and I paint all of the little pots white. And because we have seven pots to paint, I'm only showing you a few, and then here we have all seven painted white. I seriously cannot get over how cute these are. So next I'm going to take my zip sander and just go around some of the edges and sand off some of that white paint just to give it a little bit more of a weathered look. And again, I do do this on all of those little tiny wood pots. To spell out the word welcome, I'm going to be using these black sticker letters from Dollar Tree. They have had these for ever like this is an iconic dollar tree item so they should definitely not be hard to find and all i'm going to do is place the w e l c o m e on each one of the pots and i'm going to make sure that when i do that i have them all pretty much lined up so that they are the same distance from the bottom of the pot so that they all line up and look really nice once you have them glued where you need to glue them Continue adding the sticker letters onto each one of the pots until you have the word welcome completely spelled out. Once I had the word welcome spelled out on my pots, I did notice that the letters wanted to lift up a little bit on the sides because they're curved onto the pots. So I took some Mod Podge on a little tiny paintbrush and I went over each one of the letters so that they are stuck on there really well. After I had all the little pots done, I grabbed the backing and I'm going to use this decal that I made myself on Cricut and I will have a link to it down below in the description box if you guys would like to make the exact one. And it says, you and spring are always. 
and then the pots are going to say welcome. And I just think that is so adorable. After you have the decal rubbed down, you pull it right off and now you have this really cute saying on your sign. However, that cute saying is not complete without our pots, so I grab the little mini pots and I start placing them, trying to figure out how I want them spaced out. I always do this before I actually glue it down. I definitely want to make sure I like the placement and the spacing and all of that before I make it permanent. So I decided to just figure out the spacing and then I moved them down to the bottom of the sign where I want to glue them. And as you can see, I was very easily able to just put them basically sitting right on that edge to the border. Then once I like the placement, I use my hot glue gun and I start gluing them down where I would like them to be on the sign. Once all the pots are glued down, this adorable sign now says you and spring are always welcome. And now all we have to do is add some flowers into those little pots. Now, of course, you can add whatever florals, greenery, or whatever you would like into your pots. If you'd like to know the ones that I used, I used these greenery with the yellow flowers, this fall grass with the pink, and then this other greenery with the purple flowers. So I decided to pull each of the little flower pieces off along with some of the greenery, but when you're pulling them off, you are going to need to cut them down quite a bit so that they fit into the pots perfectly. Like I just mentioned, I also want to add some of the greenery pieces from these picks along with the flowers. So I cut those greenery pieces down as well. And then I do the same exact steps with the other two floral picks that I will be adding. Once I had all my florals cut down, it was time to put them in the pots and this was personally my favorite part. It was really simple to add the florals into the pots. However, I did want them to stay permanently. So what I did was I added a little bundle of the flowers. I grabbed one or two of each color and also a greenery piece. And I just took them and cut them down so that they were all equal or even. And then I made sure that they are going to fit down in the pot before I added my glue. Once I knew that the flowers and greenery was going to fit how I liked, then I went ahead and started adding a decent amount of hot glue down inside the pot, and then I pushed my flowers down inside. Once I had my flowers in, I did decide to go ahead and add the greenery piece. I thought I gathered it in the bundle, but I decided to do it afterwards, which I would add it to the bundle in the first place. So I decided to cut a greenery piece down. I did have to cut it down even smaller than what I cut it down earlier and just shoved it inside the pot so that it also had a little bit of greenery to it as well. And of course, every time I do a voiceover, I start losing my voice, so I apologize. Now I just kept adding some of the florals and greeneries into little bundles so that I can put them into each one of the pots. And again, I just add a decent amount of hot glue and then put the bundles down inside of the pots. And I repeat that step with all of the little pots spelling the word welcome. You guys, isn't that just the cutest thing ever? I am so, so obsessed with this sign. I want to be able to set this sign on top of my fireplace mantle, so I filled in the holes from the hanger with some Dollar Tree spackling, then I went over it with the white with Stolium chalk paint to match the frame. If you want to add the hanger back on so you can hang this sign up, all you have to do is place it right back into the holes and this DIY is done. Let me start off by saying this wreath only cost me $11.25 to make and I am so blown away with how it turns out. It is absolutely stunning. I will be using one of the Dollar Tree bamboo wreath forms and eight of these Heather picks, two of each color. 
Now here's the thing, we can't just go cutting these heather picks apart because they have these long greenery grass pieces on them and they're not actually glued to the stem pieces. So we need to glue them down and I decided how I was going to do that and probably the easiest way that I could figure out to do that was one, I grabbed some Dollar Tree finger protectors and then I'm going to take my hot glue gun and start adding a little bit of hot glue onto the stem about two or three inches away from the actual flower that's on the stem pieces and I glue those grass long, long pieces to the actual stem. So you're just adding some hot glue onto the stem and then pinching those long grass pieces, gluing them to the stem so that when you actually cut each one of these flowers off, the grass pieces will be glued on and will not just fall off. Then once you have them all glued together, just like this, I use some of these Dollar Tree garden shears and I start cutting the picks down. And as you can see, I start cutting the picks and the stems are around about three inches, I would say. And honestly, I decided to actually, when I cut the other ones, to go a little bit shorter. So again, don't cut them so that your stem is super duper long. You just want to glue, see how I'm now on the yellow flowers and I'm gluing those grass pieces a lot closer up to the actual flower that is on the stem so that when I cut them, my stems do not have to be so long. Now I'm not going to make you guys watch me do every single one of these floral picks, but you will repeat the same process on all eight of the picks. Once I had all my picks cut down, I kept them in individual little colored piles and I'm going to take the bamboo wreath form. I did remember that I had one that I painted green, so I decided to use that one. You can paint yours or leave it plain if you would like. And all I'm going to do is take each one of these little picks and we are going to start shoving them into the bamboo wreath form. You do not need any glue whatsoever to do this. All you're doing is just shoving them right in. It's very, very simple and very easy. And when I was putting my picks in, I did try to separate the colors and not put two of the same colors next to each other. Again, another super simple project. You're just going to keep repeating that process pushing those picks down inside the wreath form until you have it completely going all the way around. And you guys, oh my goodness. I don't even know if I'm ever gonna be able to take this wreath down. I absolutely love it. Like I've seen wreaths like this in magazines and online and they are beyond expensive. Like look at this. And I mean, come on, how perfect is this for the Easter and spring season? I saved this DIY for last because it's not technically Dollar Tree. I did get this at Big Lots for $10, but it was 80% off, so I only paid $2 for it. Dollar Tree's $1.25, so that's not very much of a difference. But what is from Dollar Tree is this beautiful rub-on transfer. It is a family affirmations transfer, and it is so gorgeous. I love the sayings. I have been trying to find the perfect thing to put this stencil on and I'm kind of redoing my kitchen a little bit and I truly fell in love with this cutting board and I thought it would be the perfect thing to add this stencil to. Just look at all those amazing affirmations, accept differences, be kind, count your blessings, dream, express thanks, forgive, give freely. Just so many things that are great to actually have displayed out in your home as a beautiful reminder. I knew these swirly details as well as the lines on the top and the bottom were not going to fit properly on my little cutting board here, so I did decide to just take some scissors and cut out just the same. 
When adding the rub-on transfer to the cutting board, you can place it to where it's lined up perfectly with the handle. However, I wanted the handle to be turned a little bit, so I did that and then tried figuring out where exactly I wanted to put my family affirmations. Once I had the rub-on transfer where I wanted it and somewhat center, you guys know and definitely seen I did not measure there. I just slapped it on wherever I thought. You can measure if you would like, but it's just going in my home, you guys. So. I wasn't too worried about it being completely perfect. However, these rub-on transfers are a little bit different than the clear backing rub-on transfers because those ones have a sticky backing to them. These ones do not. They literally just feel like a piece of paper. So I just take some of the painter's tape and just place it around the paper so that it doesn't move or slide when I start scraping it. You could use whatever you like to rub down the transfer onto the cutting board. You guys have seen me use so many different things. Honestly, I just grab the closest thing to me. Sometimes I just use my fingernail and just start pressing. Just do it however you would like and the quickest that would make it easiest for you. And in this case for me, it was a popsicle stick or craft stick, whichever you would like to call it. I'm sure you guys know the drill with the rub-on transfers, but you're just going to keep rubbing them down until you have them completely transferred on. Next, I just removed the painter's tape as well as the backing and look how gorgeous this turned out. I think it transferred on actually pretty well. I do give it a coat of this Mod Podge clear sealer just because I will be using this as decor, not for actual food, but look how stunning this turned out. It is shout out time and there is literally so many of you guys. Thank you so very much. It truly means a lot. You guys know buy me a coffee is just a silly way you can help support your favorite creators and I truly appreciate every single one of you. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you all and a few new friends on the next one. Bye!